Namely, we decide, you decide whether that alteration is benign, malignant, dysplastic, infection, inflammation. It, this diagnosis, which is the pathologists are doing today, are getting really the core of the medical diagnostic processes. Once the onco team is established, where the surgeons, the oncologists, uh, uh, meet together with the radiologist and the pathologist together, the final word, what the therapy the patient will get is coming from the pathologist, namely defining the molecular uh, based uh, diagnostics, defining um, uh, that follow up as well. But this diagnosis is done on these images. And I tried to show you before on the molecular field what we think is coming up uh, with the new probes. And today I wanted to show you in this presentation how image management and image management tools can help you to increase the accuracy of the diagnosis and then also to make more diagnosis in the given time frame. Because pathologist today is not only, a, I think, a morphological diagnostician. You are a manager. You are managing a case, basically. From the uh, grossing room till the first morphological view to the next staining step, immune histochemistry, then to the molecular step, you are managing a case. You're defining whether what uh, staining will be done, then you are collecting uh, uh, the specimen, and then you are doing in your brain really that comparisons between the first morphological uh, diagnosis. In the steps, in the different steps of the pathology work, where you are making images are in the uh, uh, gross uh, sectioning, in the morphology analysis, uh, immunohistochemistry and FISH. We at 3D Histech, we think that the imaging is really can help and is helping you know to you to make a better and faster and more detailed or quantified diagnosis and even more documented diagnosis for uh, that un uh, continuously growing uh, uh, cancer patients. So what we are developing, and this is what's first the identification and goal of the company imaging systems, imaging for the uh, uh, gross sectioning, imaging for the morphology, imaging for the immunohistochemistry, imaging for the uh, fish and uh, genetic labelings. But it turned out very early that to handle this information, to handle the images which belong to a case, needs a similar complicated software solution. Starting, you know, from the first images, which is a macro image that should be stored in a, a database. Then later on, you are looking on the morphology, the digital slide. But when you look on the immunohistochemistry, we face a new problem. The different sections have different uh, slides, uh, different, uh, the different slides have different sections in different orientation. And once what you identified on the morphology, you would like to find back on the next immunohistochemical specimen without a lot of issues and a little lot of um, uh, um, uh, mental work. And it's coming the fish. Here to identify the same area of your interest, to identify that invasive front, to find that uh, foci that was identified on the first hematoxylinosine specimen, makes today your work one of the largest part and portion. And this interactive work, one day you see the uh, uh, hematoxylinosine, Two, three days later, you can see the immunohistochemistry. Then in three, four days later, you can see the fish. And you are trying to collect first the hematoxylinosin where I have seen. Then you see on the immunohistochemistry. Then you see on the fish. And this is a lot of image management function. So what we thought, that once we can visualize well, we should have. We should really uh, have that the images are prepared for you for a fast and robust um, uh, overview of the different stainings and different specimen. For that, you can have different uh, tools, like this one here, you know, that we call the pathology cockpit site, which includes several parts. You see here there is a high resolution monitor, which is color calibrated, which is really balancing, you know, your background uh, uh, lights. And this is something, you know, which already in the radiology was established 15 years ago. That on that monitor, you can work eight to 10 hours without having headache, without really uh, getting fatigue. The other field of the monitor is really selection of the slide. 
You see here also a mobile tool, a mobile access that you can have in the consultation, in the Onco team, on the way through access to the slide database. And you have here a very fat, a tiny tool, which is very similar to your optical microscope a slide management uh, buttons. X and Y, Z movements, selection of next slides. And this is something is good putting together in this so-called pathological cockpit. That a pathologist has access to his case to the images, to the slides of his case, including the gross sectioning, the microscopic images, the different stainings together, are allowing to work for you, not on images, not on memories, on always available digital information, which can be prepared for the Onco team, which can be prepared you know, for the quantification, we can, uh, you can prepare for the teleconsultation, and you are always on that case online. And this is, I think, he happens always to you. The clinician asks, have you seen my patient? Do you remember? And comes, oh, what I have seen, and where are us? And comes that images that you have stored in your brain. With the tools that are now coming out, always online access to your slide, you can have really a very fast checkup, but you are saying, is that in the right um, uh, uh, relation? But the pathology images are really a lot. In your departments, every day are produced, done, sections, 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000 different hematoxin housing stainings. If you want to use that digital slides for digital diagnosis, it has to be comparable with optical microscope. So it means the optical resolution must be at 40x or larger. If you look on the field on the digital slide scanner providers, which is, can, which is using standard 40x resolution scanning. 3D Histec was from the first always saying 20x is good, even if it's optically enhanced as it is done by several other uh, developers, but you need 40x to see the dysplasia, to see the bacteria, you, see, you have to see the gram-negative positivity, and it must be standard. But it means that in the size of the slides, it's a 10 times gross larger uh, size. You can do a 20x slide for 50 megabyte, or slide is coming up to half, uh, 500 megabyte. But it's good for the diagnosis, because the resolution is here. So if you go for the storage, then you lose the resolution. But it means that if you want to scan 500 slides per day, with the previous technologies, it took 24 hours. Two scanners. Nobody went for digital pathology in the last five years. With 3D Histec and uh, my colleagues, we thought about the time will come when this information could be collected and can be stored and can be accessible in minutes. How we have solved? You see that uh, in our way is that there is always a continuous movement of the slide. We are detecting, you know, on this XY stage when a new field of view is entering under the objective. At that one millisecond, we are using a flashlight, a stroboscopic light, to illuminate the whole field of view. In that time, the stage is still moving, but you are so small in the movement that you don't see on the screen as a distortion. So it means if we are illuminating, flashing, you know, in a second, 100 times or 200 times, then we can collect 200 images per slide. That it means that we can collect at 40x what we need around 1,000 images in a very short time. And if we can combine it, you know, all the technologies which are coming up. And this is very special in this field. When you buy a microscope, the stand was designed, I would say, basically 50 years ago. It's robust, it's working, but it's a one-stop movement. You identify where is your field of view, where is your focal plane, and the microscope stays there. Here, at this uh, digital slide scanning, the information technology, the electronics, the visualization are not here are developing very fast. So therefore, we implement at 3D Histec always the latest technology. And we are calculating that perhaps with this uh, panoramic flash 3, we are there that we can say it's ready for the routine. Why? We are now using a new camera, which was introduced, you know, developed uh, one year ago. And it has a 12 megapixel uh, sensor inside. This 12 megapixel sensor was not here one and a half year ago. It was just started to produce a year ago. It means that now the field of view is three times larger than it was a year ago. 
we see more. Simply we can collect. With one flash, we are collecting three times larger microscopic air field. And this camera became also feasible to buy to include in our systems. The second one, sorry, uh, it's not only, you know, that uh, we are using uh, uh, 9 megapixels or 12 uh, uh, from this camera, but we are able to maintain, you know, resolution, the 40x. And we are able to, you know, to activate or image with this camera in a second around 200 images. But it's still not enough. If we cannot transfer that images into the computer's memory to the server, it doesn't help us. So it came the time when we are able now to use two very sick cables. That it transfer really these 200 images at 40 x resolution every second into the computer's memory. And it's now available. That uh, new imaging, the Coax Express technology for producing and transferring in a, a, a time frame a very large image amount became available on last year. And it's also coming that the computer itself, you know, has now 32 processors inside. It has a large memory. It has a huge storage for the same price. And this is the nice thing in the, in the development, you know. The price is not increasing. Just the technology is coming uh, more and more powerful than before. And it's coming to the phase when it fulfills all the requirements to digitize with one uh, such a scanner in two hours, 120, 150 slides. And this is what we are here. And if you see you now on the digital pathology, digital slide scanning field, there are big companies and there is 3D Histec. It's a small entity. We are 120 people in Budapest. Who of it, we are 80 in the developments. Who every day we are thinking about how to be faster, how to be more robust, how to have, you know, higher resolution for you. And it makes very fast soon, you know, that we introduced one and a half year ago, 18 months ago, the Flash 2 system which at 40x resolution could scan 33 slides. Now with the flash 3, adding a new camera, a new imaging, a new computer, we are doing around 50 to 60 slides per hour. But once these images are here, once the cases are here, how can we help you to have an access to this uh, digital case? And this is, you know, when we started to think about what you do. When the specimen enters the pathology lab, Usually it's um, uh, linked or a given, uh, candidated or given to a doctor. And this is, it will be his case. And he follows most in the time through the sample preparation process. So it means grossing, it will be embedded, it will be sectioned, it will be stained, digitized, it will be then first diagnosed, then comes a consultation, comes a second staining, a, a third labeling, comes the final diagnosis and comes out the report. Now, where you entered uh, the job mostly? Yes, you went uh, to the grossing room, asked for uh, the, you'd made the blocks, and then the blocks were cutted, stained, and then you have seen your slides and your slide tray, and then you went for the further staining and did come back. We saw that once we have such a software solution which allow for you to follow up this uh, process, you get a message that you have a case um, uh, entitled to follow and to make the diagnosis. Then you make the grossing and you make, you know, your labelings and you define your blocks and you have your grossing images. Then you get through the stainings, the information. Yes, the slides are digitized. Then you see from your home, from your desktop, from your uh, mobile tool, the slide. You decide for the next staining. You get again uh, the process and you can see it in a database and then you can have finally really see that in digital. And it turns out that today at 3D Histec, we have around uh, 20 hardware developers, but we have now 60 software developers. Because to follow these pathological work uh, processes, it's a complicated stuff. And it's a complicated software, and complicated, a complicated software tool that we tried to develop in the last um, one and a half a year. It means that this track and sign, we say you follow up your specimen preparation and once the diagnosis is done, you sign it out. The software goes through all these steps, is your part of your life, and helping you with your case registry. So once the sample is registered, part of the software allows uh, uh, barcode labeling and barcode printing that you are to putting on the container. And then the first step, that the case is uh, defined, 
that uh, his code is defined and the responsible doctor is defined is started. Now we are going uh, some data that you can add, standard uh, data that you are defining and, and recording from the specimen. But it's coming much more, you know, that we, with the barcode printers and barcode readers became part of the digital pathology uh, processes and softwares and hardware equipments. And this is what we are usually applying. Any type of such a barcode labels can be used. Scanners can be used. And all are coming, you know, to one single case linked, all the informations, and you can follow up where we are. But it's coming now to the phase where you are doing the crossing. In the crossing, you are doing blocks, and the blocks are also prepared for that uh, follow-up. It means that the blocks are, you know, printed, the same code which was linked, you know, to the patient, and surely you identify the first block, the second block, the from the first container, second container, and this is then also recorded. And every time anything has happened with the specimen, that the barcode is then registered, and then the evening, uh, the event is uh, then recorded in the database into the patient follow-up, in the case follow-up. And then you can also define at the uh, grossing what, how many sections do you want to have, which type of sections want to have, and this is the work list at the sectioning side. Once the block was transferred to the sectioning uh, assistant, how many sections he has to do, and he prepares again the barcodes, puts on the uh, sections, makes the uh, sectioning, and then um, uh, uh, places the sections on the slides uh, 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 labeled with the barcode. Once uh, the staining is done, this is not recorded, uh, the stainers do cannot follow up the barcodes. Then is coming the slide scanner, which identifies based on the barcode, the specimen, links to the patient database, and allows you to have an access to your case. And this is something uh, which is coming into the digital microscope. And here we had to redesign our processes because your case management at your desktop, at your side, is a little bit different and needs a little bit different opportunities and options. Basically, you have a load, daily load of new cases. You have a load of previous cases and you have a set of slides which you are giving out for further evaluations. There is another set of slides where you are requesting consultation and then you have also communicating internally, externally with doctors. And this is, you remember, it's like Outlook. <laughs> Uh, that you have, uh, you know, a set of always coming work, uh, consultations, and then uh, requests. And here you can select the in progress, the new or the last cases, and after the short description, it started, it's, you know, under preparation, it's important, there was an external link for that, which has the small labels help you to really sort out which filter out your cases, there are previous documentation, clinical databases, and then you see the images to this slide, uh, to this case. And this is something we think um, sorry, important, that you can, you know, ask for a new staining for this specimen, you can forward this case to another doctor, you can say a consultation request. And this is something that all the cases which was, you know, entered the lab this day, which are unassigned, which are your cases, as new, in progress, or blocked, or ready to diagnose, or forwarded, or closed, are for you available from your desktop or from your mobile tool. You are always, you should be always, you know, digitally um, uh, uh, available to access uh, this, uh, this, uh, this work phase. And then we are coming, you know, against the labels that really, what was routine, what was exceptional, what was, you know, for you important, all that you can try to filter out because you, later on you will put these cases into the archive and in the archive you will search for based on diagnosis, based on uh, importancy, based on organ. So, uh, for the different uh, cases there are these informations like uh, um, uh, clinical data available, like you know what happened in the grossing process, histological, cytological, and even the molecular uh, results are available. But important, you know, once we are going to the digital field. And in the digital field, as I mentioned to you, you have the macroscopic images that was recorded at the grossing. You have a different stainings together. So I went too fast. And then you can always select and you can look it in parallel. So where we are now, you, this is for example in a case, 
You see it was the macroscopic images. These are different stainings in different orientation. The software helps you to reorganize that slides, you know, into the same orientation. Even you can prepare an artificial virtual tray where you can select the, uh, the order of the slides and you can do further digital uh, manipulations. So you can see all the slides or the different stainings you can go through, but you can do it in parallel. And once you put a ROI on a morphology, you can export it automatically. So once you labeled on the morphology, oh, that's what I am interested in, the different immunohistochemicals, it will be shown on the next slide, and it is done after the registry automatically. Also available for the fluorescence. Then it's coming the image analysis. And it's very important that this image analysis is, can be now defined and run automatically in a batch way. One of the most important part of, I think, the pathological diagnosis to identify the epithelia, the stroma, or the other comp uh, tissue parts, and for you, usually as cancer-related work and cancer analysis, the epithelia is important. For image analysis today, we are using single fields where we are defining UI want to do only on this um, single field of you. But with an artificial intelligence and this technology, we should be able to separate the tissue components, like epithelia, stroma, vessels, connective tissue, or muscle tissue. And this is a trainable algorithm where really, with very high accuracy, these tissue components are separated from each other. And later on, the single image analysis is running on the predefined area, whether it's an epithelia, or it's a stroma, or a lymphatic uh, part of the tissue, whatever. And then you see that this immunohistochemical uh, analysis is, can be defined on the tissue compartment. Here the system describes for us that from the whole tissue, whole, the whole sections, the cancer was 36% area, the stroma was 24%, and all this information can be collected. Then the whole study image analysis is running. As I mentioned to you, it can run really in the background as well. And the number of cells are in thousands, which are then selected and evaluated and then shown in the reports. And then you can compare and overlay uh, the hematology uh, with the uh, fluorescence images with the morphology images. It's coming for you, again, some flor flor fish enhancements, fluorescence enhancements, autofluorescence compensation. The fish quantification software, which I've uh, shown before, is part of the whole analysis process with a lot of uh, cells that we can evaluate and then gating and then uh, evaluating in the gallery. Once this analysis was done in the uh, digital microscope, you can select your field of view, your interest, and then export back into the database. And then having it part for the report or for the diagnosis or the sign out. As uh, looking and evaluating the case, your information is unlimited for, uh, for uh, including your diagnostic process, like clinical, like microscopic images, and looking for previous slides, previous uh, 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 specimen from the specimen, so searching for the same patient um, or similar patients. And then you can talk. It's like, you know, from your desktop, you can ask a question, you can ask a here help, or you can delegate uh, this specimen for your uh, assistant uh, to do further. And then you can ask also for consultation. It could be online and offline. You can uh, answer for a consultation. You can accept it and deny it. And then you can go for the further stainings that you approve, and then you ask from this software. And then together is coming all these slides together to the uh, different slides into a, uh, a final report. Even, you know, once you have a molecular evaluation, PCR sequencing, the data can be entered and part of this um, uh, software in, in, the, in, the, in the codes. So once the diagnosis is coming, different uh, coding procedures can be implemented and then can be uh, sent back and stored into the hospital information system as well and the signature. So the digital pathology, and I think it's a very important difference uh, from CD history point of view, what we understand and what we are developing. Digital pathology is, yes, big part is morphology related. But the second one is the immunohistochemistry, the morphological diagnosis, the fresh frozen analysis, 
the teleconsultations, and even some uh, further applications. And where the way goes, you know, as uh, we are developing in Budapest since um, 16 years, that was the first, uh, I would say, uh, uh, pre preliminary slide scanner. Then we have no more than 1,000 slides out in, this, in the world. We are officially working on the field since um, uh, 2004. We are continuously developing. And this is, let me show you as a final uh, slide, what we think this technology will be, and partly already in. Because if you consider that I have a slide, which is cover slit, which is labeled, then I put it into a scanner, and then I'm waiting for the scanner to have done, why do we do it separately? Why don't we do it like in the clinical chemistry, where once you have a plasma, you put it into analyzer, which makes the reaction, pipettes, makes the photometric evaluation, calculates uh, the ranges and tells you it's positive, negative, normal or non-normal. I tell you why, because imaging was not competitive, not comp fast enough to, hand, uh, to be competitive with the sample preparation. Your stainers, the sectioners, or the assistants who have you in parallel, 10, 12 assistants, then the stainers, the color slipper, do in an hour around 100 slides. The scanners could not do before. Well, they are competing today is the immunistochemistry. And at 3D Histech, we tried to first develop the first words ever integrated immunistochemical stainer, cover slipper, scanner, image analysis system, and documentation system. Well, in the mind was, the immunistic chemistry you are doing in a lab, 80, 150, 200, 100, 250, which is already a volume for digital slide scanners. But if you have a pipetor system, you know, if you have a cover slipper system, then which brings the slide after the cover slipping was done into a scanner, then runs the whole slide image analysis, you have like immunistic uh, clinical chemistry. Number, number of positive cells, number of positives in epithelia, you have seen in the previous. And this is what we spent the last six, seven years, a uh, lot of engineers at 3D Histech with this system, which we will show you in Cologne, Cologne in the European Conference of Pathology. It means it's a robotic pipetting system, but this pipetor should be similar or uh, you know, at least such an intelligent like our assistance, finds the specimen on the slide. The two-day immunohistochemical stainers are overwhelming the whole slide surface with reagents. So you have your specimen around 20% of the slide surface, but the DACO, but the Roche, but the uh, bond system uses for the whole surface 150, 100 microliters reagent. Because it doesn't know where is the specimen. If you do it manually, your assistant knows. He sees with his eyes. So this uh, stainer system has an intelligent preview uh, image analysis system to find before the staining where is the specimen on the slide. And this pipetting system pipettes from this reagent tray exactly on the area of the specimen, uh, the reagents, and then it's coming the incubation, the washing steps, the cover slippers, and then it's coming the sc scanning, digital slide scanning. And then you have in your database, in the track and science of area, the uh, uh, immunohistochemical slide always available, immediately available. And this is ruling, uh, working you know, with different type of reagents, like uh, you're able to use um, it because it's an open system. And you see this is the front, this is the reagent tray, this is the waste and the buffers and the washing units. And if you come back, oh, sorry. It's a quite complicated system. It has around four different cameras inside. It has around six different motors. It has around eight different sensors for fluidics, for temperature, for sp position sensoring, and doing all the steps from the uh, staining, washing, and power sleeping. And this is, I think, will come. So digital pathology, as you see today, yes, it helps you order digital slides, which can be used for different purposes. But it will be integrated. You will get only digital images very soon, once the speed of the slides can allow it. And it will be then a simplified, smooth process for everybody. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.